Hey, everybody. So, I'm going to talk about one of the many, many, many themes, or at least some type of symbolism, um, from Dave Eggers' A Hologram for the King. Um, I liked this book overall. Not my favorite. I didn't love it or anything like that. But I think that is because I've read A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers, and that book is a whirlwind of everything happening all at once, and it's a lot of emotion. Um, and this book is the opposite. There's a lot of sitting around and slow-moving, waiting game kind of stuff, which is the theme that I want to talk about, is all the waiting they do. Um, they wait for the Wi-Fi. Um, Alan is there trying to get stuff done. Well, kind of trying to get stuff done. Um, waiting to figure out why he's even there, like why they let him go in the first place. Um, they wait for the king, who doesn't come in until like the last two pages or something like that. <laughs> um, they wait for Cream, their handler. Um, Alan waits on figuring out what his sist is for a majority of the book. He waits to figure out what he wants to say to Kit, and he never does. Um, and then at the end, he's still waiting on the king <laughs> for him to come back. Um, and it's this waiting that kind of makes me think of Alan is kind of just letting his life happen. At this point, there's been so much that has gone wrong that he's kind of lost this l love and luster to live and to participate in his own life. Um, and I think that's a big part of what Dave Eggers was trying to get across. Maybe. <laughs> I think there are a lot of things, and there's a lot of symbolism in this book, and that's one of the reasons I really liked it, is because I like that symbolism and like, all the themes. Um, and Alan doesn't really start participating in his life in any way until he meets Dr. Um, Hakem? Hakim? How do you say her name? <laughs> um, but he doesn't really get too involved, even in... Like his scene with Ham when they're in the bathtub. He's just kind of there. And that upsets her. Understandably so. Um, and it's not until he meets Hakeem and goes through the getting his cyst figured out, which is one of the few things that actually sort of gets resolved, um, that he participates in a relationship as well, because he's let most relationships just kind of fall flat in his life, like with his wife, uh, well, ex-wife, with Kit, all that stuff. Um, and then finally on page 301, after Alan um, writes to Dr. Hakeem, Hakem, um, that it says he can't just sit in the tent anymore like he's been doing for the rest of the book. Um, it's not until then that he has to, like, get up and go and do something. So I think she is kind of a catalyst for a change in him, or a possible change in him. Maybe. We obviously don't see that, because at the end, Alan is still sitting, waiting for the king to come back. But, that being said, I think this is a different kind of waiting for him. It's an unexpected kind of decision. Everyone kind of expected him to go home and deal with his life and try to find a way to pay for Kit's schooling and that sort of thing. But he doesn't. He stays, and I think at this point it's because he's found something that's worth... Not to say living for, because I think he does want to live for Kit. Because he does love her. But, that was another source of stress for him. And I think with Dr. Hakim, um, or Hakim, however you say it, um, he kind of found that spark again. So I think that's why he wanted to stay. And I think that was a little like, unexpected. So, go Alan in that aspect. Um, so I, ho I hope this was... Okay.
okay as far as vlogs go. And I wasn't just rambling the entire time. I do hope it made sense. But yeah, that's what I got out of a hologram for the king the most. That's why I liked it. So right on.